Right then, hello, good evening and welcome. Hello wherever you are. My name is Paul. You've possibly seen the daily teasers go past. Um, they're a fun daily brain teaser quiz. I'll try and put the link in to the info cards over over there when I start this video. But at any rate, I do daily teasers. I hope they're fun and enjoyable. At least my regulars like them. But I also talk about films I've seen. I've not seen one recently because, frankly, right at the moment, I want to see a nice short film and there's not many being released due to COVID. Um, but I also watch TV shows. I tend to stream them over to my Apple TV and talk to my friends via WhatsApp What in the meantime. Um, just recently, over the past couple of weeks, I've been watching the award-winning Watchmen. I saw episode two last week and wrote about it. Uh, last night, I saw episode three, and I'm going to be telling you about that. Episode three is called She Was Killed by Space Junk, and it comes with a another beep and a little bit of a, a, a framing story. She Was Killed by Space Junk introduces us to FBI agent Laurie Blake. For those of us who've read the original graphic novel of Watchmen, we'll realise it's of course Silk Spectre. But the second Silk Spectre. Uh, she's played by Jean Smart, and it introduces us to FBI agent Blake after she's arrived in Tulsa. She's been... The framing story shows her in a phone booth recording a message to uh, her ex-lover, Dr. Manhattan, at his base on Mars. And it, the episode shifts between her doing the recording and the main piece of the story. She's been ordered to Tulsa by her boss, Senator Joe King Jr., to help Tulsa Police Department with the, or investigate the death of Chief, the police chief, Chief John, the John Don Johnson character. She's arrived in time to find the, the Tulsa police funeral for burying their fallen co colleague before the investigation of his death has been completed. It's a little irregular, let's put it this way. But she gets there in time to see the burial take or the funeral orations taking place, but just before the burial, and just in time for a 7th Cavalry suicide bomber to turn up at the funeral. Not what you normally expect at a funeral, but there we go. She arrives in time to shoot the bomber and see Angela Abar, Regina King, Knight's sister, throwing the bomber into Judd's open grave and then throwing the coffin on top to cover the blast. In the wake of the wake, if you'll excuse the phrasing, Angela is... Like many police staffers in the state, she is incredibly distrustful of the FBI. There's, we're seeing the traditional rivalry between the two forces. She is distrustful of Laurie Blake, um, and whilst, and but gets to meet her whilst exploring the tunnel the suicide bomber used to infiltrate the funeral. The one thing Angela does learn from Agent Blake is that both of them know about J Judd's hidden Ku Klux Klan outfit. Not necessarily something you like in a, to see in an old friend of yours, however well you think about him, Angela. We sort of we know found in last week's episode. Whilst all of this is going on, and I'm hoping I'm coherent, I really am, but whilst all this is happening, the Lord of the Manor, Jeremy Irons, receives a letter from a mysterious figure called the Gamekeeper. The Gamekeeper? knows of the Lord's former identity as Ozymandias, Adrian Veidt, the villain of the original story. The gamekeeper, it also seems, really doesn't like the look of what Veidt's up to. The fact that the, the episode's final scene gives us Laurie Blake's punchline and sees a massive car landing right in front of her, well, Let's just say car crashes are obviously interesting in this universe. <laughs> Moving on, am I enjoying this series or what? Yes, I am. It's giving us... 
it's giving us some very strong characters. I mean, it's got two of the strongest female leads I think I've seen in a while. Um, Regina King as Angela Abar is a strong and sympathetic character, and she, we're investing in her. We're seeing how she's doing with this particular job, with this particular very messy investigation. We've also been introduced reintroduced to Laurie Blake or Laurie Jubiter, the Silk Spectre, um, and daughter of the original Silk Spectre, um, Sally Jubiter. The background work is fantastic. The characters for a start are incredibly strong. I really do mean that. It's quite something to watch these sassy, humorous, funny, bright characters interacting and doing their thing. And it's the background world again that is getting my attention. The original Watchmen novel had a very well thought out, what well, very well thought out um, background. I mean, there were every page, and it's not something you see in the TV series, but every page had some of the characters smoking artificial cigarettes or electronic cigarettes in a world today where everybody's vaping rather than smoking old fashioned cigarettes, tobacco. That's quite something to have seen. That was quite visionary in its time. You don't see it in the TV series, but I'm assuming it's out there somewhere. But the background world is done with little things. There's a couple, there's a couple of little things that grab my attention. In the original graphic novel, there's a throwaway line along the lines of uh, God exists and he's American. And they're talking about Dr. Manhattan, Manhattan the most powerful creature in the whole universe. In the TV version of the Watchmen universe, that's literally been reinforced. We see Laurie Blake recording a phone message for Dr. Manhattan. And I personally looked at that and thought to myself, she's not. It's, yes, it's a phone message, but it's not a phone call. She's in a confessional booth talking not to her ex boyfriend but to the nearest thing the Watchmen universe has to a god. It's her talking to God in a confession booth. It's not a phone call. Something maybe to think about there, and I know that will cause discussion. Um, there's other things. I mean, there's little dinky bits. The smoking thing caught me, because, of course, in the comic, they all had electronic cigarettes, and it's something I've seen. You walk out on the street, there's half a dozen people with vapes. That's a little thing. But there's also a photo. I've taken of a screenshot I've taken showing us Laurie sitting in touch of a big pop art poster of her old colleagues from The Watchmen. It's pop art. This version of The Watchmen universe has pop artists sitting around. Somewhere out there, there's a version of Liechtenstein or, or, or what is face? Chap that was associated with the Velvet Underground. Andy Warhol. There's an Andy Warhol out there. There's a Liechtenstein out there. This universe has pop art. <sighs> that, it has to be said for me, is what's making this series worth watching. It's very self referential, a friend of mine called it. It's, it's, it's coming from someone, it's been made by someone who knows its source material, is referring to that source material, and is filling in the background universe at a rate of knots. Tell that honking honker that's honking past to sod off. Hey, at any rate, it's, it's wonderful to watch. It really is. At any rate, I'm... I'm going to leave it there, because obviously they're getting noisy out here. I don't know if you can hear them. But I'm going to leave it here, and I'm going to ask you one question. I'll be watching this next Tuesday and doing the review, probably by Wednesday. If you'd like to join me, I'd love to have you on the trip. Thank you. Thank you.